Today I'm going to review Zero Shoes, which first found fame through the hit TV show Shark Tank in 2013. The Zero Shoes founders were offered $400,000 for a 50% stake in their company by none other than Kevin O'Leary. After turning down the offer, Zero have continued to grow in the industry and are now competing as one of the top dogs in the barefoot shoe space. So let's get this review started so we can see why Zero Shoes are so popular. I actually bought my first pair of Zero Shoes back in 2018. Since then, I've tried dozens of different kinds of barefoot shoes, as can be seen in the many reviews we have done on them. So while I enjoyed wearing Zero Shoes in the past, it has been interesting to test them out again, especially now that I have a point of comparison to all the differing models of barefoot shoes I've tried over the past couple of years. To organize this review, the following categories will be covered, and they are all time stamped in the timeline of this video so that you can easily find the sections that are of interest to you. So we tested the Aptos, Prios and HFSs, which are the more popular fitness come casual shoes from Zero. You can find links to them down below. All these models sport thin and flexible 5.5mm zero drop soles, which is pretty standard for barefoot shoes. However, I did find that the HFS sole was the most flexible and provided the most amount of ground feel, probably due to the unique material composition in this particular model. For this reason, I preferred wearing them to the Prios. Apparently the Speed Force shoes, which we have yet to try out, provide even more ground feel, which is pretty insane considering how much sensory feedback I was able to get from the HFSs. All these models also come with a 2mm removable inner sole, which doesn't really affect their flexibility, but does reduce the amount of ground feel one gets through the shoes. However, it's a nice add-on, particularly for those who are new to barefoot shoes and are still trying to adjust to the reduced sole thickness of barefoot footwear. Now, as you may know, the toe boxes of barefoot shoes are supposed to be wide enough to allow the toes freedom to spread naturally while walking and running. The easiest way to check if a shoe's toe box is wide enough is to flip the shoe over and stand on the undersole while applying pressure through the toes. As you can see, the HFS and the Prios had no problem accommodating my toes. The app toes were also wide enough for my wife's feet, so thumbs up with regards to toe boxes of Zero Shoes. Now the one unique feature found in Zero Shoes is their Warachi strap. How it works is that there is the strap that ties around the heel and attaches to the shoelaces. When you tighten the shoelaces, they pull on the heel strap and that actually helps to support the heel and keep the shoe connected to the foot at all times. Also, when you dorsiflex the foot, like in the bottom of a squat for example, the shin pushes the laces forward and that action tugs on the heel strap, which might keep the ankle joints a little more aligned. While this is a cool feature, I'll be honest, I haven't felt a massive difference in my feet stability when compared to other barefoot shoes. But then again, my feet are pretty stable and my ankle joints are in good alignment. So perhaps it would assist someone whose feet and ankle joints are less secure. So if anyone has used Zero Shoes and has experienced great benefit from this feature, please comment down below. Looks wise, the strap is a little distasteful for me. I much prefer a cleaner and tidier look. But I think Zero have realized this because they have hidden the Warachi straps between the layers of material in the new HFS model, as well as some of the other designs. While this is a purely subjective thing, I do think it's a good move and it's definitely another reason why I prefer the HFS over the Prios. Anyway, moving on to product range. Zero have a pretty extensive range of shoes, which include everything from hiking and snow boots to trail running shoes, a wide selection of barefoot sandals, and even some semi-formal shoes. Because we didn't get the opportunity to test them all out, I'm gonna do a little experiment. Let's treat the comment section like a bit of a forum. I'm gonna post a comment about every model of shoe that Zero has in its catalog. And I'm gonna ask you to please reply to the comments relating to the model you have owned, along with your little review of it. In that way, we can turn this video and comment section into a one-stop shop for all those looking to find out about Zero Shoes. Out of the two pairs I tested, the HFSs were my favorite. I wore them a lot for road running and they performed superbly. I would say that they gave me the most amount of ground feel of any barefoot running shoe I've tried to date. 
They are definitely up there among my favorite barefoot training shoes. The only downside is that they happen to be Zero's most expensive training shoes outside of their trail range. Honestly, if Zero could get the HFS down to the price point of the Prios, they would probably become my default training shoe just from a value for money perspective. And this is a good segue into talking about the price of Zero shoes. Zero shoes start well below $100, which is a price point not commonly seen in this niche space. In fact, Zero makes what is probably the most value for money barefoot shoe that we have come across to date. That is their new Aptos Unisex Slip-On. At just $59, excluding shipping, these are fantastic everyday casual shoes, according to my wife, who is the one who tested them out. For her, it's always about comfort and practicality, and the Aptos tick both those boxes for her. And it seems she's not the only one who thinks so, because at the time of making this video, the Aptos was the only zero shoe model that was sold out on both the European and US websites. I think another feature that makes the Aptos so popular is the use of hemp canvas for the upper material. Now, up to this point, I've been pretty ignorant about the benefit of hemp as a fabric. But after reading a 2020 literature review on hemp use in the textile industry, I learned that the oldest known woven fabric was in fact made from hemp. The first pair of Levi Strauss jeans were made from hemp, and the first American flag was said to be made out of hemp too. This review paper goes on to state that hemp clothing is stronger and more durable than cotton clothing and does not deform easily. However, what's really pushed the hemp textile industry to make a comeback recently is the fact that it is supposedly extremely eco-friendly and has about 101 other uses, from insulation and building materials to food and cosmetics. So it's pretty cool that the Zero company has experimented with hemp and it has personally inspired me to delve deeper into the world of hemp and all its benefits. Anyways, the Aptos from Zero Shoes definitely give you a great bang for your buck. Now, moving on to quality and durability. We have not owned our current pairs of Zero Shoes for long enough to give you a thorough review of their durability, but they seem fairly robust thus far. While I don't have my pair from back in 2018, at the time that I gave them away, they were still in pretty reasonable condition, despite many hikes and runs in them. Now, Zero Shoes do offer what they call a 5,000 mile warranty. Basically, what that means is that if you can prove to them that any part of the sole has worn down to below one millimeter thickness, they'll give you 60% off the listed retail price of your next pair. While this sounds all well and good, I feel that it's a bit of a cheeky marketing ploy. I mean, how much and what type of proof must you provide of your cumulative walking or running distance in the shoes? Nevertheless, the company also offer a 24 month manufacturer defect guarantee on all their shoes, which is all one really needs anyway. Besides the soles, the build quality of the upper fabric and the overall feel is good. In my opinion, the overall quality matches the price of the shoes well, and even exceeds that of some of the other more expensive barefoot shoes we have tested in the past. The final thing to talk about is sizing, shipping, and returns. Sizing always seems to be an issue with barefoot shoes. I think this is because there is no industry standard. This is a very new market, and I have a hunch that each company is doing its own thing and creating custom molds at the factories. My general rule of thumb is to have one to 1.5 centimeters free space between the tip of the toes and the end of the shoes to accommodate natural toe and foot motion. When I ordered my usual size in the Prios, I got the required fit. My wife's Aptos also fitted true to size. However, with the HFSs, I had to select half a size bigger to get the same fit. This discrepancy is probably due to the fact that the soles in the HFSs are different to the other two models. There are recommendations on the Zero website, which is linked down below. I'll suggest you follow the recommendations because the company will not cover the cost of the return shipping due to sizing mistakes. Talking about shipping, this is not free either, which is a bummer. However, I found out that the US standard shipping is pretty cheap and the cost to ship in the US does not increase the more pairs you buy in one order. 
Well, that's our take on Zero Shoes. If you want to check them out, you can follow the links down below. Purchasing through our links does help support our channel through commission at no additional cost to you. So please consider doing it that way. Also, if you are new to Barefoot Shoes, then you must check out our Barefoot Shoe Transition Program, which is designed to help you safely transition to minimally supportive footwear, specifically for running. Furthermore, we have also just launched our Strong Feet Strong Foundation program, which is designed to build athleticism from the ground up. At the end of the day, our feet are the only contact point we have with the ground during most movements. So we ought to make sure that they are strong and functioning optimally. With that said, thanks for watching another review by Exercising Health. I'm your host, Christopher, and until next time, cheers.